Hey everybody, welcome back to Laptop Seniors. Today we're gonna to get a Panamanian driver's license and we're not gonna do it you know, the hard way where you have to go for a road test and all that other stuff. I'm assuming that you have a driver's license from a country that Panama recognizes. US, Canada, EU, you know, other countries around the world. If they recognize your license as a real license, you can get the whole thing done in about two weeks, okay? And that's about as fast as you can get it done. I knew that we wanted to see and rent a car to go across the entire country of Panama. So we needed a Panamanian driver's license in order to do that with the rental car because you know, we could rent the car with our current licenses, but if we got caught doing that, you're in big trouble because we already had visas. Once you have a visa, you cannot use your original country's driver's license. It's done. Actually, from the moment you apply for the visa, you can't do that. Although I'm not sure how they'd even know that you applied, you know, in that little interim period. But for sure, once you have a visa, man, you don't want to be chancing that. They literally take the car. And I don't think you'd be wanting to be responsible for paying for a car from Avis or Budget or something like that. Let me take you through that. This is exactly what goes on and you're gonna see pictures, you're gonna see video, you're gonna see a bunch of stuff so that at the end of this, you'll know exactly what's going on. First off, you need your current driver's license, whether it's a Canadian license or a US license from some state, you're gonna need that authenticated at your embassy that it's real, okay? So you're gonna to have to go to the US embassy and get an appointment. And my understanding is that those appointments you know, are lasting two, three months because they're pretty backed up. So you might want to try that out ahead of time before you even get to Panama, try to get an appointment for that. Or you can go to the Canadian embassy, which is what we did. You take your Canadian driver's license along with your passport and a credit card form that they have that you know, you're gonna pay them, okay, and it's all filled out. You put that in an envelope and you go to the embassy, which is right by Multiplaza Mall. It's basically across the street. And uh, you know, you're gonna go to this building, you're gonna go inside, but by the way, when you get in here, the amount of security here is astronomical. You know, it's like, you're, like you're trying to get into Fort Knox or something. It's kind of weird. Literally, when you go in there, you're gonna have to go to a kiosk, you're gonna have to put in all your data into the kiosk. You're gonna have to go up and take an iris you know, check at that thing. Then they're gonna send you over to where the elevators are and then there's gonna be a bunch of things that look like the turnstiles going into a subway and they have eye readers. So as you pull up, they actually recognize your face and your eye and the thing opens so you can walk through to the elevator. And when you get to the elevator, the elevator literally is going to be saying, you know, your name and it's going to give the floor where you're going. You can't go to any other floor. Like it's unbelievable security. So anyway, you go through there, you get up to the top and uh, certainly with the Canadian embassy, I don't know what happens with the American one because I didn't have to go there. But when you get to the Canadian uh, floor, you, you know, it opens. This is what it looks like. There's a basket there. You just go in and, you know, drop your uh, envelope with your stuff in it there and usually a guy comes out and you know he'll be talking to you and stuff like that so then you leave okay and you leave and you have to wait three or four days and they'll send you a notification that they've processed it it's all done you actually get an email first where you can know that it's happening because they'll do your credit card after about two days so you can see on your credit card that okay well they're they just you know took the money, so I guess they're done, okay? So that's kind of what happens there. After that happens, you're then going to go back to the embassy to pick up your stuff, and when you get to the embassy, this is what you'll have. There'll be an envelope there with your license and you know, your original Canadian license and your passports, and also there will be a letter in there that will be written in Spanish with your name on it, with your driver's license number so the Panamanian people can look at that and go, okay, that's you. Now, you have to be really, really careful um, because I ran into this and, and my wife did too, where for whatever reasons, I don't know why, our passports don't have a middle initial, but our driver's licenses do. Huge, massive problem for the Panama you know, licensing bureau for, for driver's licenses. They want everything to absolutely match exactly. So I freaked out and I'm like, oh my God, you know, so I wrote a letter to the embassy real quick, figuring, okay, this is gonna be another three, four, five days, maybe longer to get this whole thing fixed, pay all over again. 
But it wasn't. What I didn't realize was they look for this stuff because it comes up a pretty fair amount, and they had already had it in the Spanish letter that basically this person without initial and this person with initial, they're the same person, and this driver's license is valid for both these people. So you want to be really careful to look for that, you know, before you even go into whatever embassy that you have, you want to make sure that your license, the, the exact name and middle initial on your license and on your passport is exactly the same. If it's not, ask your embassy to actually put in the letter that you're the same person. Make a couple copies of everything. <laughs> Make two, three, four copies of everything because you'll be amazed how many times, you know, something will get messed up and you're going to need another copy. And if you don't have it on you, well, you got to start all over again and all that sort of stuff. So make a lot of copies of everything. That process just took four days. You're now going to have to burn another three or four days because you're going to have to go to a Sertritsen office and bring that letter and have that letter certified that it actually is from the Canadian embassy or the American embassy or whatever embassy you know, has done it for you. So that's another three to four days. I didn't actually take it to the Sertritsen offices to get it certified. I actually paid a person called Zhu, Zhu uh, Concierge, and she handled that for us and a few other things in this driver's license. You know, took us around and, and doctor's thing and stuff like that that I just thought, again, it's easier to just have somebody who speaks the language, knows how it goes, just let them handle the stuff and just follow along for the ride. So that's what I did and I'll show you Zoo at the end of this video, okay? So she goes and she gets that letter from the embassy authenticated that it is a real letter from the embassy. You're gonna have to do that. In those intern days, within the first four days while I'm waiting for the driver's licenses to be certified, although you can do it anywhere along the process here, what I, you're also going to need a blood test, okay, just in case you get in an accident and things like that. And you can only go to a certified office, a Sertracin lab that they okay to get that done. Let me point out a couple oddities in this process, at least that I encountered, okay. Um, when I tried to actually find a lab, a Sertracin lab that was approved by them, when you go to their website, there was no page for that. There was a page, but it was blank. And no matter how, many, how much I tried, different browsers and everything, nothing would appear. So it's like, okay, where do I go? Um, luckily, you know, Zoo knew where to go, which is this one right here, which is right near the Albrook Mall, okay? Now, this is uh, where the Sertrison offices are. This is also where you would get a blood test in that same little mall. And, you know, right here, this whole thing right here is the mall, this yellow part, okay? And there's an airport there too, and, but basically here's the mall. So once you're at Albrook, you know, you could take the subway, the metro out to there and then just, you know, get an easy cab ride or an Uber over to Sertrison. Now, one other thing, the Canadian Embassy was by the Multiplaza Mall, was right across the street. As, you know, I mentioned to you and, uh, you know, it, you can't miss it. You just walk out of the back of the mall and boom, there's the building right there. But the Embassy of the United States, it's out here. So let me just go in a little bit. Um, this is the uh, Panama Canal right here, Miraflores Locks. This is where the canal runs through. But the Embassy is out, you know, the U.S. Embassy is out here. So you're going to have to get an appointment and go out there to actually get your driver's license certified. Again, probably the easiest way to do it is just go to the mall. Again, just take a cab from there or an Uber to the U.S. Embassy. Luckily, out by the Albrook Mall in Panama City, you know, it's not very far from the mall, there is a Sertrison office where you can actually get a license and there's a lab right there. So you could do one after another, but you're gonna need, you know, that lab thing copied. So you might wanna get it a day or two ahead of time just to make sure. Zoo took us out, we got the blood tests and that was cool. Now me being over the age of 70, okay, I'm 75. When you're over the age of 70, 70 or above, you're gonna need a doctor, a geriatric doctor to actually say, hey, you're of sound mind, you can actually drive, you know, you can see and all that sort of stuff, okay? So you're gonna to have to go to one of them. Now, Zoo made the appointment, she took us out there. I saw the doctor, I mean, it was really a pretty easy thing and basically, he, you know, he weighed me, took my height, you know, did the usual thing where they put the thing on, you know, where they're listening and they, 
you know, they did all that sort of stuff. Asked me a bunch of questions about the medications that I was on. And, um, you know, and he's taking all that in notes. And then he or she will give you a letter that, you know, that certifies that by a doctor, a Panamanian doctor, that you're okay to drive. Now, what do you think you need to do with that? Exactly. You need to make a lot of copies of that letter. That letter doesn't need to be certified um, for whatever reason. Now, at this point, you're in good shape to actually go to any one of the searchers and offices and actually get your license. You're going to take all of the documents. You're going to take your passport. You're going to take your original driver's license, you know, from your home country. You're going to take copies of all of the, you know, paperwork that, that was done. You're going to take the certification from another searchress and office that that embassy letter, you know, that is in Spanish is actually valid and it's real. You're going to take that and you're going to have copies of that thing too. And you're going to go to an office. Now, if you're, you know, applying for the pensionado visa, the retirement visa, the jubilado visa, more than likely you're over the age of 55. If you're over 55, you're going to get up to where they're doing licenses and you're going to see a whole bunch of lines. Now, this particular one uh, right by Albrook Mall, it had three lines. There was one on the left, one on the right, and the one in the middle was a jubilado line. And when we got there, there was nobody in it. So, you know, and other people are waiting. It was a pretty decent line. And we just went right up uh, to the you know, front of the line, uh, the middle line, which was the jubilado line, the retirement old people line. And Zhu went up there. She handed the paper. She talked to the person. Uh, yeah, I mean, you could do that too, but you know, she's talking in Spanish infinitely faster. And they're checking every single thing to make sure that you have all the pieces. Otherwise, because you're outside actually, otherwise they're not going to let you go into the building to now go through the rest of the process of getting a driver's license. They'll keep you outside if you don't have everything. Ideally by now you will have a cedula. Now you can do this with just your passport. But as I explain in another video, you know, you want the schedule because the schedule is like a social security number, okay, or a social insurance number. Once it's given to you, that number never changes for the rest of your life until you die. And even after you die, it's still with you, I guess, probably. Where a passport, you know, expires and has to be renewed. And when you get a new passport, it's going to have a different number on it. You don't want that passport number tied to things because when it expires, you have to go through a lot of the process all over again and get stuff changed to your new number. If you have a cedula, again, like a social security number, when your driver's license is tied to that number, it's never going to change. So you never have to go through that process. So if you have a cedula, you'd have the cedula in that envelope too, that she's handing to the lady outside as she's checking all the papers to make sure that, you know, you have everything you need to go inside and get your driver's license. When you get inside, okay, there's a couple things that are going to happen when they finally call you up to go. And now I was kind of lucky for, because she said it doesn't normally happen, but they were fine with having Zoo come with us and sit right by me, which was great. Um, normally you'd go up and somebody there would probably speak English. Um, that's what Zoo was telling us, but sometimes you catch somebody who doesn't speak English very well and now you're kind of at a disadvantage because if you can't speak Spanish real well, what's going on might be a little confusing to you. Anyway, so the first thing they do, they give you an eye test, okay? And the eye test was, you know, it's pretty simple. There's just a bunch of squares and they had the letter C. And, you know, one time the letter would be, you know, it would look like a C and it would be just like this. Okay. And it's in a particular box. You have to, you know, touch the box that it's in, you know, to, to, to straighten it. Okay. Another time it might look like this. And then you have to touch the box that straightens it. Another time it would look like this and you have to touch the box that straightens it. So, you know, they can tell that you can actually see, you know, a small C and understand what it is as opposed to a G or you know, or some other O or some other letter that looks like a C. That's the eye test. Then you're going to have to do a hearing test. And the hearing test is just like any other hearing test you've ever been in. You know, been in. They put earphones on and, you know, and then, you know, there's a tone, different pitch tones and different ears. And you have to kind of point to the right ear that you're hearing it in. Okay. And they go up the spectrum and down the spectrum. 
I did the first thing and it was going on for a really long time. And I mean, man, this is the longest hearing test I've ever had in my life. So finally the lady stops me and uh, she starts talking to Zoo. And Zoo says, well, you know, he says, well, can you take those earphones off? So I took them off and they looked at them. The lady looked at them and both of them started to laugh. They were on the wrong ear. So, uh, you know, I, instead of the left being on the left and the right being on the right, because she just handed them to me, I just put them on, they were supposed to be the other way around. So everything that I was hearing in my right ear was supposed to be in the left ear and vice versa. So we took the test all over again, you know, and it wasn't, at that point, it was only like maybe five or six sounds and it was over with, where the other one, I don't know, went on for like five minutes, it was crazy. Then they asked a whole bunch of questions. They wanted a Panamanian phone number and a Panamanian address. Okay, like where are you staying? It could be a hotel. Uh, I put down the Airbnb that we were at. It's just something because they're not really gonna do anything with it because they're gonna give you your driver's license right then and there, so nothing is going to be mailed. But, you know, I guess in theory, they want it just in case you get an accident. They want to know where you live, okay? And an email address. A person and an email address and a phone number for them of somebody to be notified in case there's an accident. Also, they want to know, and you're going to have to give them, so you might want to know ahead of time and have them written down already, any medication that you're on. Usually, you know, if you're older, you're going to be on some sort of medication. Any allergies, again, in case they have to go to the hospital and, you know, you're out of it and you can't talk and they want to know if you're allergic to something that might kill you. And finally, you're going to say yes or no to being an organ donor. She'll take a while. They'll print up all of that documentation. They're going to hand it to you on a piece of paper and they ask you to look it over to make sure that everything is 100% correct and make sure that you check it to make sure that it is 100% correct. They're going to prove you to go the next step, which is, you know, you're going to leave that lady in her desk in her booth um, and you're going to go around and you're going to have to pay. There's a small fee to get a driver's license. It's even less if you have a pension auto visa, you get a discount because you're a senior. Uh, I forget the am amount of money, but it wasn't very much. It was, you know, $18 or something like that. It was, it was, it was pretty low. And then from that point, you're going to have to wait about 10, 15 minutes for them to actually make your driver's license, just like a regular, you know, driver's license card with the hologram, the whole deal, you know, pretty high tech, actually. I thought all of the Panamanian government stuff, by the way, no matter what we did in Panama that had to concerning the government, it was pretty high tech. And I thought that they were pretty fast. They moved pretty quickly. Um, you know, it wasn't like some third world country. It was, you know, faster than a lot of times that I've seen in Canada or the U.S. So you sit there for the 10, 15 minutes, they call your name, you go up, you know, they smile, they hand you your driver's license, boom, good to go. You know, you might want to check it over just to make sure that the spelling and everything is correct, which is they ask you to do. And if it is, you know, congratulations, you have a Panamanian driver's license. For four years, if you're under the age of 70, if you're 70 or over, it's only two years. And every two years, you have to go again and get a, another doctor's, um, you know, medical. He's got to go through you once more and make sure that you're of sound mind and all of that stuff. And, uh, you know, they know that you're okay to drive the older you get. Because if you're going in there and you're like 90 years old, you might have been good at 88, but at 90, you might not be able to drive anymore or see or any of that. And that's pretty much it. And so... Um, again, uh, we used Zoo Concierge. This is Zoo. So one of the things that Zoo does is help people get through different things like a driver's license. Take it from there, Zoo. Hello, I am Zoo of Zoo Concierge Service. Um, I am your personal assistant for help you to get your driver Panamanian license and also another process too. There you go, hope that helped. And if you're gonna be going for a driver's license, uh, you know, I think, uh, hopefully I've given you like every possible minute detail to be able to pull that off. The first day we were in Panama, I was at the embassy dropping the driver's licenses off. So everything went about as fast as humanly possible. And for me, it took nine business days from beginning to end to get everything done. I, I don't know how you do it any faster than that. If you like this or any of our other videos, make sure you hit that like button. Also hit that notification bell that tells you when there's another video that's gonna come up, you know, that's on something about Panama or some other part of the world because, man, we got a ton of videos, you know, in the process of being done from a whole bunch of countries all over the world because we've actually done this a few times. Uh, you know, I've immigrated into three, this is my third immigration thing. 
uh, you know, I'll tell you about that in some of the other videos. And, um, you know, so if we do something new, you're going to know because you hit the notification bell. And as always, please, you know, make sure you subscribe. That's the big thing for YouTube. The more subscribers you have, the more they assume that whatever you're doing is pretty decent. So if somebody else has an interest in Panama, in this instance, a driver's license or something else, you know, as it serves up videos to them, it's going to serve up ours. The more people watch, the more it gets served up. It's kind of like a vicious circle that's actually good, <laughs> you know. So subscribe if you have not really, really appreciate it. And until the next time, see ya. Ooh.